Good afternoon and welcome to Zion Church. I'm David Jordan and on behalf of Zion Church Restoration, I want to welcome everybody. And uh, we're in for a special treat today. Neil Lucas is going to perform and just tell us what's going on. It's just good to be playing music for people again, which is awesome. But to be in this building, in this space, uh, it's always had an amazing sound and feel and vibe. And um, it's just good to be back in here. This is a tune that I got to record in here um, a while back. Um, it's called, Would You Believe Me? It's got a long name. Would you believe me if I told you I don't want no other love? train running downhill with no brakes because it gets faster as it goes. I have to make myself start it slower than I want to play it because it'll be so fast by the end of it I can't hardly play it like I want to. So.
changes, the world gonna keep on turning, life keeps keeping on. Love takes you for a ride, how hard do you want to hold on? This old world will find a way to knock you down. Got to get back up and fight another round. Don't be discouraged. Don't let the devil win. We can work this out together. Baby, I will be your friend. So come here little baby Sit down on my knee Tell me how you're feeling Tell me what you need I can help you I will sing you a song You don't have to be alone Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. All right. So we'll talk about this guitar for a second. Um, this guitar was made by a friend of mine um, who's got a guitar shop in Columbus, Georgia, um, Sylvan Guitars. Uh, but it's called a dam caster. Um, it's like a telecaster body, you know. Um, but <clears throat> It's made out of wood uh, that used to be a part of the dam in the Chattahoochee River downtown, and they had to take some of that wood out whenever they were making the white water rapids um, to be able, I guess, you know, to let water in and out, you know, to do like they wanted to. And Frank ended up with some of the wood, and I ended up with one of the guitars. So it's um, pretty special that it's got that history to it, um, and that a you know, a good friend of mine built it. That's cool, too. Um, it's made out of pine. That's typically not a wood you think about guitars being made out of. And it's made out of pine that was, you know, huge. Come from, a, you know, a huge tree whenever they cut it down. Um, so I imagine it was pretty hard then, but then it was underwater for, I don't know how many years. Uh, so it got really dense, and I'm sure that really positively affected the tone, at least for what I'm looking for. It also positively affected the weight because it's real heavy. So it's probably, I don't know, it's heavier than a Les Paul, which is a heavy guitar. It's, it's the heaviest guitar I got, but that took a little getting used to. But anyway, that's what this guitar is. It's got a neat history to it, that it, that it came from there. So um, I guess it's, you know, 
I like to think it's still got some of that river mojo in it. So I'm gonna play one more song on this guitar before I switch over. Um, learn how to play guitar from my dad um, and from some other people, you know, in the community here too. That I, I guess I'll talk about some too as we go along. But um, then you, you know, you leave and you go off and do your thing, and then you come back. And uh, I guess this song's kind of about <clears throat> some of all of that. It was on one recording project to go lost in the music thing. Trying to find it on the internet. All my music's there. We plugged that. But um, so I can make some pennies. But anyway, um, this is a little thing called Lost in the Music. Hope y'all like it.
daddy used to have a bunch of records, an old record player that sat on top of the piano. He taught me how to use it, how to, you know, climb up. Well, yeah, he taught me how to climb up there, I guess, Mama. I was climbing up on the top of the piano to get to the record player. But anyway, I could get up there and, <clears throat> you know, that they'd be at work. My grandmother lived with us. I'd be hanging out with her. My sister would be at school. And it's be before I started school, you know, when I was a little bitty boy. I get up there and put those records on there and just listen to music during the day. And it was like the Beatles and I don't know what all else was in there. Otis Redden, B.B. Uh, King, and Johnny Cash, and you know Merle Haggard and all of that. But um, and I was exposed to a lot of that music with him playing it too, you know, because he has played music his whole life and played in bands and. But that's where that, that one line and that, what I was getting at, that one line in that song is where it comes from, you know, listening to records and so, um, a lot of my childhood in, in there that I remember. I still remember what, what if, you know, when you put the, the needle down before, one of the things that's vividly etched in my mind was on this Beatles record. I don't remember what side it was, but whatever, uh, Whatever side it was, the first song on there was um, I Want to Hold Your Hand. And I used to love that song, man, when I was a little bitty boy. That would, you know, get me hyped. And so I would put it on, and you'd hear that crackle for how many ever seconds before it would start, and then, you know, it would come in, and I don't know. That might sound crazy to y'all, but I just thought about that. That's etched in my mind, thinking about listening to that music that Daddy had. That's where I got my first musical education, you know, listening to that stuff, but that a little needle until the music would hit. I'd just be sitting there waiting for it. So, um, anyway, I'll put my damn caster down for a second here. Anybody got any questions or anything y'all want to talk about? Hey, yes, ma'am. Well, Oh, yeah, so this one, yeah, compa yeah, compared to the one I'll play in a minute. And this one's even thin, too, for an acoustic, but it's, it's because it's an electric guitar. And so it doesn't have um, a sound hole or like an acoustic chamber to, you know, to amplify the, uh, the music. Um, you have, the, you know, the pickups, and then it goes through your amplifier and all of that. But, yeah, that's why it's thin, though, because it's, um, it's an electric. What's that? Oh, if it was that thick, yeah, I'd have to sit down and play it all the time if it was that thick, so. <laughs> the they are coming back. Man, I know. I know, and it's really cool to me that it's coming back for a couple of reasons. One, that it sounds better to me because it's analog, and you can, you can, Go back to recording everything analog, and that's a you know analog to digital. That's a whole thing for recording. Of course, everything's digital now because that's just the way the world is for the most part. But record players coming back also means that um, you can make you know you can reproduce your music on records again on vinyl. And that's crazy because you know like the first CD that I made vinyl was a thing. It was gone. It was cool. Everybody had some, but. Um, you know, now you can put stuff on vinyl and people are, are buying vinyl again. So that gives us a, uh, you know, another merch avenue, I guess, too. You know, another way to, to get your music out there. Um, and I just think it sounds better, too. Y'all will be glad I tuned it. I brought my tuner. I said, well, if I bring my tuner and use it, <clears throat> They won't have to listen to me tune. They won't be able to hear it, but I mean, I didn't think about everything was going to be. So you guys still have to listen to me.
this is what I forgot. I had to go back home and get it. Yeah, my cape rope, so. So, you know, another person from the area that uh, had, a, had a big impact on me playing music was Precious Brian. Um, and, uh, you know, I, th I think everybody in here, you know, may be familiar with, with her music at this point, but if you haven't delved into it and listened to it, really, um, it'll bless your soul. It's not really anything else that sounds like it to me. Um, but this is, uh, this is one of her tunes. I'm gonna play it for you. It's called, if, um, if you don't love me, baby, would you fool me good? Like in that one verse, she loves me on a Monday, she loves me on a Tuesday too. She loves me on a Thursday, Friday she sure do. But she don't love me on Wednesday. Or he or you know, she was singing he, but um I was like, what's up with Wednesday? No love on Wednesday. I never got to ask her that, but skip that, take that day off, I guess. Ooh. I, I mean, I'd have to, I, I saw, you know, I'd have to say my daddy, because, um, I'm here. <laughs> <laughs> well, I'm older than I used to be. I've, I've gotten a little bit wiser, so. No, I'm, I imagine him, really, though. Um, that's, that's where I really got all of my musical upbringing. Even though I did go to uh, to a, a music school and study guitar after I got out of high school um, at AIM, the Atlanta Institute of Music, it was pretty cool. I didn't have to study anything but guitar. You know, I didn't have to take probably the other classes I should have been taking. But um, and to that point, he, you know, he, everything I learned was was from him. Oh, uh, Mr. Slade's funeral. Oh, yeah, man. 
What you remember what that was? That's right. That is a pretty one. Maybe next time I play here I can coax him into coming on back. He said he wanted to come and listen today. So um, but yeah, you're right. We were both talking about how pretty that was, you know, whenever we, we worked it up. Um, I mean, you play all the time and you get used to playing and every once in a while you do something and uh, decide, for some reason it's just really good, you know. And that one struck us the same way, brother. I mean, it's really pretty to us.